Could you all please be seated, please? Before I start, I'd like to say what an honor it is to do this. I came from a small town in Kansas, and the size of the town was smaller than the size of the class. So I thought that was kind of... Thank you. The purpose of this speech is to be one of inspiration that says we as Wheat Ridge High School students will simply take the world by the reins and conquer what is opposing us. I hope this not come as a shock to you, but this is not true. What lies ahead of us is more complex than what has been faced by any combination of the past generations and classes. True, the classes and generations that faced manifest destiny, the Great Depression, and World War II face monumental obstacles, but none compare to what our class and generation must conquer. We are all familiar with what lies before us, literally all the mistakes of past generations, pollution, the national debt, the loss of industrial superiority in the world, oil dependency on unstable countries, the nuclear arms race, and perhaps a couple of scratches in our patriotic armor. That's the bad news. The good news is we have the power and the ability to change what needs to be changed. Our three years at Wheat Ridge High School have given us the required building blocks to pave the way to success. We definitely have our work cut out for us, but remember, the only place that success comes before work is in the dictionary. But we do possess the necessary building blocks to achieve success. In the beginning of our senior year, we proved we could cope and survive change. Was not the computer registration one of our most trying times? I mean, who says you can't fill those dots in with anything but a number two pencil? And we proved this in the ability in one of the nation's toughest academic schools. Often, though, the vaguer characteristics that form this excellence go unnoticed. These characteristics are acquired by education, but an uneducated man can possess the utmost of these characteristics. These characteristics are such things as compassion, dedication, reliability, and honor. These characteristics are found not in the explanation of footnotes or demonstrations of F equals MA, but in the teachers themselves. Was it not the teachers who were essential to the canned food drive last winter, who through their pursuit of compassion propelled Wheat Ridge High School into collecting more cans than those that challenged us? And the very definition of dedication can be found in the efforts of our teachers. For except for a mere handful, all of our teachers are still continuing their education. Additionally, the very essence of reliability can be found in these last characteristics, but even more is given. I challenge anyone to point out a teacher that has refused a student help. And Lord knows we all relied on our teachers for that last minute question before the test or the zero hour pestering. Every time we turned for help, we received it. Far and long, though, the greatest achievement we have been exposed to in the last three years is the subject of honor. Honor carries strange complications with it, for one never knows if they possess it until one is tested. And this test has been passed admirably by our teachers. Each year, we have had the demonstration of honor, some seemingly more exemplary, but all examples are of honor. When we were sophomores, the administration and faculty had to enforce the seemingly medieval cafeteria rules, even though the D-Day of food fights was just for fun. And we were, we were called to school last year amid electrical pow, power failure. Decisions had to be made, hard decisions. Both times, the school's officials had to make difficult decisions in face of certain criticism. However, the greatest examples of honor occurred 
during our senior year. Hopefully, because of this, it will last as a continual reminder of honor. The concept of an honor implies tough decisions and often tougher responses, and no better occurrence of this happened than last fall. In no way, shape, or form was it easy for Mr. Stevens and Mr. Kugler to enforce rules that would and were greeted with mass opposition. Nevertheless, out of this unfortunate incident came one of the greatest displays of integrity and character. For all those involved out, they were just required to do. Carrying out the rules that is, one is responsible to enforce demonstrated integrity. And the accused faced up to their mistakes, forming a flawless mold of character. We all know it would have been very easy to turn one's head or just tell a little lie. But it was a question of honor. And therefore, the proper actions that were required were adhered to. Though this may seem like a heavy dose of honor, is it not honor that our country relies upon? All this mentioned previously may not seem like good news to many. However, our elders have quickly recognized this minimal uncovering of our ex past dilemmas as experience, the greatest teacher of all. For it is this exposure to the models of future problems that will allow us the ability to conquer future problems. It is not what we expect in an inspiration, the hope or assurance that we will conquer. Well, the hope is held by our elders, and the only assurance that we have has been, ex been the exposure to similarities of future problems. The gist of all this is the fact that our inspirations lie on our shoulders, and for the first time in our lives, we are directly, not partially, but directly responsible for our actions. For inspiration is within ourselves, no one else. Our ability to achieve the most from our inspirations lies in our ability to pattern ourselves after high school experiences. For if we have the required tools, now it is up to us to build a magnificent castle, a castle named life. Thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce to you this evening the platform guests taking part in our graduation ceremony. Guests, please stand when I call your name and remain, remain standing. And the audience, please hold your applause until after everyone has been introduced. Dr. John Pepper, the Jefferson County Superintendent of Schools. Mr. Jack Sprague, Central Area Superintendent. Mrs. Judith Pierce, Secretary of the Jefferson County School Board. Mr. Dean Huber, Central Area Administrative Intern. Mr. Dale Toft, Wheat Ridge Principal. Ms. Marilyn Jensen, Wheat Ridge Counselor. Mr. Bob Brown, Wheat Ridge Counselor. And Mrs. Barb Erickson, Senior Class Sponsor. The, the graduates who are taking part in our program are Tara Waldrup, Cheryl Moore, Heather Leslie, Steve Bumpus, Lance Schumann, Ian Henry, Nelson Scott, Rudy Talek, Robert Long, and Darren Dixon. Let's give everyone a hand. Thank you.
this is it. <laughs> it's graduation. And a day that for many of us is the fulfillment of a lifetime of hopes, dreams, and the beginnings of tomorrow. This ceremony is the culmination of not only 12 long years of hard work for us, but 12 long years of patience and frustration by our parents. I read a card recently that I wanted to share with you. It says, when passing through the doorways of life, People ask, where are you from? And I tell them, from parents and family who care. I've been given life and set free. Thank you, Mom, Dad, Dennis, and Jody for always loving me. And I will always love you, my big brother and my big sister. Now they've been special too, and I'm sure just like many of your big brothers and big sisters, that I taught you all the things that you really needed to know and made sure that you kept smiling through the hardest times. Little brother and little sister, they had a hand in my high school years as well. They supplied the excuses as to why my essay wasn't in on time to my English teacher. To each and every one of them, I say thank you. 
for it was family and friends that brought us through three years of consistent challenges. We were knee-deep in some of the biggest challenges around this same time last year when we became the senior class of 1986. And suddenly, everyone looked to us for leadership. They looked to us to make good times great. And lower classmen looked at us and wondered how we survived the torture they were living through. We were seniors, and with that came inherited responsibilities. The jokes on about the sophomores seemed a must. Yet I think we can all remember ourselves as sophomores and how stupid we felt walking down this senior hall. But then we were juniors and found ourselves caught in the middle, not quite the leaders of the school, but certainly not at the bottom of the ladder. Everyone kept saying, just wait, you'll be a senior. So we persevered. Finally, we were seniors, but with the status came more responsibilities. Decisions had to be made. The future, what would I do with my life? Go to college, get married, start a career? Everyone, including me, was preoccupied with what I would choose to do. How would I make such an enormous decision? I looked back at the years behind me and how they influenced how I would choose. There have been joys, my senior prom, senior privileges, turning 18, but with the joys come sorrows, the death of a friend, denial letters from colleges we'd always hoped to attend, demotions instead of promotions at that one in a million job. Being a senior, it's been fun, but now we have to look ahead to the future and what an awesome thing that is in itself. Imagine the word. The F might stand for friends, the ones that helped you survive high school and the ones you haven't met yet who will stand by you as, as you face what awaits you. U is for understanding, understanding what you've accomplished and learned and applying it towards life. T could be trial, the ones you've survived in the past and the ones that you've yet to face. The second you is just that, you as an individual. Without you in the past and without you in the present, there would be no future. R, this is reality. We now step out of the security of high school and to in what our parents term the real world. Finally are the emotions, E in the word future. Without emotions, we couldn't feel. We would have no way of communicating with others. We couldn't remember the highs and lows of high school. High school, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom and it was the age of foolishness. It, it was the epic of belief and it was the epic of incredulity. It was the season of light and it was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope, and it was the winter of despair. We had everything before us, and we had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven, and we were all going direct the other way. Perhaps not even Charles Dickens himself could realize that he was not only writing about the French Revolution in his book, A Tale of Two Cities, but he was also talking about life at Wheat Ridge High School over the past three years. And I encourage you, and it is my challenge to the senior class of 1986, to go out and make it an age of wisdom and to make it the best of times because we are the spring of hope and we have everything before us. Yes. Family, friends, fellow students, other farmers, and honored guests, thank you and welcome. <laughs> welcome to the 1986. 
Welcome to the 1986 senior class graduation. I'm honored to be speaking to you on this great evening, which turned out to be even better. Now, it's hard to believe that this is the end of 12 long, hard, agonizing years. It all seemed to have gone by so fast. Now, 12 years seems like quite a long time, but if you break it into little groups such as elementary school, junior high, and high school, it doesn't seem so bad. Now, if you want to get technical, 12 years is equal to about 12,960 hours spent in school. Now, that's a lot of hours spent in school. And, you know, that's about 432 reruns of Gilligan's Island that we missed. And for what? Free education? But you have to ask yourself, was it all worth it? I only spent 12 years in school for two small reasons. One was my mom made me do it. And two is peer pressure. <laughs> I'd only do it again only under one condition. That is, the school board will agree to give me a dollar for each hour I've spent in school. <laughs> I think everybody has mixed feelings about graduation. Most of us are excited and happy that we've finished 12 years of school. And we are also sad because of the friends we've made over the past few years. We will probably not see most of them after this. Uh, and now we can look back and reflect all the good times and the bad times we've had. Seems like just yesterday that I dressed like a nun for Halloween. <laughs> and now here we are graduating, about ready to leave. And also it's time to apply all those things that we've learned over the past 12 years. So the next time you go and buy a piece of property and someone tells you that it's flat and uh, has no slope, well, you can, after careful, reasonable deduction, which we learned in geometry, you can figure out that it's most likely going to be a cliff. Or if you apply for a job at McDonald's and they ask you to find the polar coordinates of a french fry, I think you can probably do that. I'd like to thank all the teachers I've had over the years for putting up with me for 12 years. I know it hasn't been easy for them and it sure hasn't been easy for me. I'd also like to thank uh, Jim Johnson for a memorable experience that we'll never forget. I think everybody's looked forward to this year, the senior year, because it's a feeling of accomplishment and authority, and you get to push around all those little sophomores and such. So while you sophomores, you only have one more year or 1,080 more hours until you can be a senior also. There's one thing I'd like to say to all the seniors before they leave. This is something my father told me. And I'd like you to remember this. Uh, don't, or do take what you, do take what you do seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. Thank you all for 12 great years. Good luck to everybody, and I'll see you in 10 years. Love that I have felt for you, but will the 
things we have learned Help us light the stars and not get burned When the time comes, will you count the cost Of all the friends that you have lost And the memories that are lost like tears and rain Time has gone, and it's time to move along. Our destinies now depend on you and me. We've dwelled inside our sheltered lives, but the child has grown, the games have changed. And as we start to grow apart, our lives once set are rearranged. I would never dare to doubt the love that I have felt for you. Light the stars and not get burned When the time comes Will you count the cost Of all the friends that you have lost And the memories that are lost Like tears and rain Ladies and gentlemen, platform guests, graduates. It's with a great deal of pride that I join with you this evening in celebrating and honoring the Wheat Ridge High School graduating class of 1986. This class will be added to an illustrious group of outstanding students who have passed through the halls of Wheat Ridge High School. And this graduation ceremony is the culmination of many activities and programs which have been presented during this week. On Wednesday evening of this week, we presented and honored the many scholarship recipients and departmental winners in a program held in our auditorium. For those of you who are not in attendance, we wish that you were to get an idea of how talented this class is. The diversity of the talent in this class is exceptional. During my association with Wheat Ridge High School, I've recognized the secret of the success this school enjoys. It is the high expectations that the students have for themselves. It is though their individual motivation that this school excels. And it goes from the beginning of the first individual to the 414th. The Val Victorian and Salutatorian Awards I present this evening are given to the students who have achieved in their academic programs to the highest degree of excellence. This group of students who started as sophomores, during their first year we had a lot of 4.0 GPA students. 
That's how talented this group was. We kept going through junior year. We still had nine at the very top. So this evening when we present our awards, you can see what kind of achievement these young people have accomplished. We have a salutatorian winner. I would like to have that individual please come forward so that I can present them with their medal. <coughs> the salutatorian winner, Mr. Bill James Scaff. Ladies and gentlemen, we still have seven perfect 4.0 GPA people. These will be our Val Victorian, Val Victorians. I will read them in alphabetical order. If you will come forward and stand up here, I will then present you your medal, and we can give them all a great round of applause. Greg Addington. Bill George. Kirk Greenberg. <laughs> Britt Garina. Chris Harosi. Tiger Lily Lee. And David Rye. Ladies and gentlemen, our valedictorians. Ladies and gentlemen, in addition to those young men and women, the school board also honors the students who are national merit finalists and national merit uh, semifinalists. And we have 10 of those people this year. Let me tell you a little bit about the national merit awards. Over a million high school students take this exam every year. The people who are commended, and we have six of those, are those students who score in the upper 5% of, of those students who are taking the test. We have four National Merit finalists. These students scored in the upper one, one half of 1% 1 of the 1 million people, high school students taking this test. We want to recognize those people, and Ms. Mrs. Judy Pierce, our Secretary of the Board of Education, would like to tell you a little bit about this award.
Thank you, Mr. Toff. A few years ago, the Board of Education began a practice of recognizing outstanding academic achievement in National Merit Scholarship competition. Of course, Wheat Ridge High School has a fine tradition for academic excellence. This evening, it is my honor on behalf of the Board of Education to present to each recipient a dictionary. It's a personal award that we wanted to give to them to recognize their outstanding achievement in National Merit Scholarship competition. We congratulate you and thank you. Mr. Toff, if you would please read the names, I'd be glad to present the dictionary. They're all right here in alphabetical order and I'll read it. Will the following students please come forward to receive your dictionaries? Mr. J. Ernst. <laughs> Britt Garina. <laughs> Erica Larson. Tiger Lily Lee. <laughs> Catherine Pyle. Amy Russ. Our four finalists, Karen Burgi. Brian Hopkins. David Nodell. <laughs> and Thomas Zach. Thomas Zach. Thank you, Miss Spears. And now I'd like to present our Central Area Superintendent, Mr. Jack Sprague. Thank you, Mr. Toft. Members of the Wheat Ridge Senior High School class of 1986, platform guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a pleasure and a privilege to be able to participate with you this evening in the commencement ceremony. The pride that these graduates feel towards reaching this milestone in their lives is most evident and very well deserved. Each of us here tonight share with you seniors that pride and a job well done, and we share with you the excitement that we know you feel as you look forward to the many milestones yet to be reached. Before I actually present the class for graduation, and with the president, uh, with the permission of your president, Todd Ingley, I would like to ask you to join me in recognizing the principal of Wheat Ridge High School, Mr. Dale Toft. As you know, Mr. Toft is retiring in a few weeks after 28 years of service to the Jefferson County School District as a teacher, as a counselor, and as a principal. The past two years, of course, as your principal at Wee Ridge High School. It has been a pleasure and a privilege to be associated with Mr. Toft as a friend and as a colleague. Please join me in wishing Mr. Toft the very best in his new adventures in the sunny climes of Southern California. Mr. Toft, would you stand?
Thank you, Mr. Toft. I think some of these seniors envy where you're going, and you may see some of their own, some of them on the beaches. Mrs. Pierce, I certify that those being granted a diploma this evening have met the requirements of the State of Colorado and the Jefferson County Board of Education. With pleasure, may I present the Wheat Ridge Senior High School Class of 1986. Thank you, Mr. Sprague. It's certainly a pleasure to share in your celebration this evening. Enjoy it, but reflect on it just a bit. Graduation day is one of the most exciting but abrupt endings we come to in our lives. Most things change little by little, some things dwindle away, but not high school graduation. It completes a portion of your life you have prepared for since kindergarten, an experience you will never have again. However, the word graduation indicates a form of passage, a rite of passage, moving from one event to another. Commencement suggests the beginning of something new. As you seek your new experiences, having successes and failures, it is our desire that we have prepared you to seek your hopes and dreams, given you the tools to prepare for success and fail. Take risks. Be an involved member of your community. Be involved in the process that addresses the issues in your community. To the parents tonight, in a time that public education is under scrutiny and some criticism, we appreciate your commitment to public education and we thank you. We also appreciate the support you have given to this school district. Graduates, this is a unique experience, a once in a lifetime event. Know that we are proud of you this evening and we look forward to your accomplishments. Mr. Sprague, on behalf of the Jefferson County Board of Education, I take great pleasure in accepting the 1986 graduating class from Wheat Ridge High School. Platform guests, administrators, fellow students, families, and friends. It is time for the class of 1986 to say farewell. On this special day in our lives, <clears throat> it has become our turn to come here and to experience the feelings of happiness and pride everyone must feel when they graduate from high school. It should also be a time for us to think about the many things that have taken place in the world while we have been in high school. I would like to recall just a few events to give us a perspective on the time that's passed these past three years. During our sophomore year, the Korean Airlines flight 007 on its way from New York to South Korea was shot out of the air by the Soviet Union, killing all 269 persons. Striking unexpectedly and swiftly, President Reagan sent U.S. Marines onto the island nation of Grenada in the Caribbean. The Marxist regime regime that had seized power a few days earlier was deposed. The Space Shuttle Challenger went into space and made history with its deployment of two astronauts who flew free of the spacecraft, the first humans to do so without a tether, 17,500 miles per hour, 320 feet from the spacecraft. And finally, the Olympic Games were held in the United States in Los Angeles. <clears throat> Hundreds of Americans took part in running the Olympic flame across our country from Washington, D.C. to Los Angeles to light the torch at the games. During our junior year, President Reagan and Vice President Bush were re-elected, defeating Walter Mondale and Geraldine Ferraro. And our Space Shuttle Challenger again went up and carried the largest crew in history of the space flight, seven astronauts, five men and two women. And also, remember the Coca-Cola company during our junior year introduced a new flavor in their product, and said the original flavor would no longer be available. But just three months later, they said they would once again sell the flavor they used for 99 years. 
<clears throat> I know about you, but I'm happy. <clears throat> okay, finally, during our senior year, the wreckage of the Titanic was found in the Atlantic Ocean, where it had been for 73 years since it went down in 1912. And on January 28th of this year, our Space Shuttle Challenger exploded shortly after launch. All seven astronauts were killed in the explosion. Having briefly reviewed just a few of the world events that have taken place during our three years at Wheat Ridge, it doesn't sound like they've been very good years for the world. But there have been many positive things happen also, and it will be the positive things and the many memories and experiences we have, d we have had during our high school years that we will remember. These are the times now we will someday refer to as the good old days. Most of these memories will remain with us forever. Along with our accomplishments during high school, we all have had some failures. A failure sometimes seems like the end of the world when it happens, but we must always remind ourselves that failures happen to everyone. Last night at the baccalaureate ceremony, Mike Rosen beat me to the punch when he used an example that I had already had planned to use in my speech tonight, but I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway. That was the example of Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth hit 851 home runs, but he also struck out 1,330. We don't think about his failures, and neither did he. He just kept swinging and knowing that the law of averages would take care of the rest. When times are difficult, keep in mind that it's, it's sometimes best to remember the ancient Chinese proverb that says, seek the seeds of victory in every defeat. One thing I think most of us have learned in high school is not to be followers. Hopefully we have learned to be independent thinkers and to make our own decisions. So many people miss the boat because it is easier and more comforting to follow the people ahead without questioning their qualifications and without doing some independent thinking on their own. Processionary caterpillars, little worms, travel in long undulating lines one behind another. A French entomologist once led a group of these caterpillars onto a rim of a large flower pot so that the leader of the procession found himself nose to tail with the last caterpillar in the procession, forming a circle without end or beginning. <laughs> Through sheer force of habit and, of course, instinct, the ring of caterpillars circled the flower pot for seven days and nights until they died from exhaustion and starvation. A plentiful supply of food was close at hand and plainly visible, but it was outside the range of the circle, so the caterpillars continued along the beaten path. People often behave in a similar way. If someone shouts fire, it is automatic to blindly follow the crowd, and many thousands of people have died needlessly because of it. How many stop to ask themselves, is this the, really the best way out of here? Hopefully our years at Wheat Ridge have taught us to think for ourselves. This time of graduation is a good time for us to clean the slate of our lives and to wipe away certain emotions and bad habits that hold us back. I remember a time in school watching my teacher write the word ain't on the blackboard. Then she had us all look at the word for a long time. Finally, very slowly, she erased it. As she did, she told us to erase it from our minds, never to use it again. As the word disappeared from the blackboard, it disappeared from our minds. I've never forgotten that example and how effective it was. I read a story once about a man who decided something about who decided to do something about an enormous piece of granite that was on the ground near his house. He got a chisel and a hammer, and before long, he carved an excellent reproduction of an elephant. His neighbors and people passing by were amazed because it was so well done that it looked like a real ele elephant grazing on his lawn. A friend asked, asked the amateur sculptor how he ever managed to do such a fine job without a model to go by. The man replied, I just chipped away everything that didn't look like an elephant. To be successful, we need to keep the knowledge and habits we have acquired here at Wheat Ridge, but there are also things we need to chip away. A person needs to chip away everything that doesn't look like a person or he or she most wants to become. At this point in our lives, we are ready to go ahead with whatever we have selected to be the next step in our plan for ourselves. We can build our experiences of the last three years at Wheat Ridge. We should take care and do the best we can on the way to the accomplishment of our goals. A Greek poem once said that it is the voyage and the adventures along the way that count, not the arrival itself.
where a person goes is not nearly as important as how he gets there. And another example is the fact that a house is built is not all that important. It is the manner in which it is built that makes it great, average, or poor. As we leave Wheat Ridge, we will always remember our friends. I know that we will continue to keep in touch with our close friends and perhaps renew old acquaintances as well. But each year from now on, we will be adding new people to our circle of friends. If we're not, something is wrong. We're in a social rut. We are all social animals. If we dam up our supply of friends, we tend to become stagnant. We need a new, fresh supply coming in all the time. Every once in a while, we will meet someone who will become a good friend for life. But to do this, we need to take the initiative and go out to the other people. Let us make it a point to keep in touch from time to time with our old friends, but let's also be on the alert to make new ones. Nobody has too, too many friends. Most people don't have nearly enough. In preparing for this speech, I came up upon a lot, another story about a little boy in India who walked up to a wise man who was sitting and looking at something in his hand. The little boy went up and looked at it. He didn't quite understand what it was, so he said to the wise man, what is that? It's a cocoon, the wise man told him. Inside the cocoon is a butterfly. Soon the cocoon will split and the butterfly will come out. Could I have it? asked the little boy. Yes, said the wise man, but you must promise me that when the cocoon splits and the butterfly starts to come out and is beating its wings to work, to work itself out of the cocoon, you won't help it. Don't help the butterfly by, by breaking the cocoon apart. Let it do it by itself. The little boy promised, took the cocoon, and went home with it and sat and watched it. Finally, he saw it begin to vibrate, move, and quiver, and finally the cocoon split. Inside was a beautiful, damp butterfly, frantically beating its wings against the cocoon, trying to get out and not seeming to be able to do it. The little boy desperately wanted to help. Finally, he gave in and disobeyed the wise man's orders. He pushed apart the two halves of the cocoon, and the butterfly sprang out, fell to the ground, and died. The little boy picked it up and, in tears, went back to the wise man and showed it to him. You see, little boy, the wise man said, you pushed the cocoon, you pushed open the cocoon, didn't you? Yes, I did, said the little boy. The wise man said, you don't understand. You didn't see what you were doing. When the butterfly works out of the cocoon, the only way it can strengthen its wings is by beating them against it. It beats against the cocoon so its muscles will grow. When you helped it out the way you did, you prevented it from getting strong enough to fly. That's why the butterfly fell to the ground and died. This story tells so well what seems to be harsh or cruel in nature is, is in reality wisdom and kindness for the times ahead. In closing, I'd like to say, let us enjoy this moment, for after this week, we will all be going in different directions, each to achieve the goals we have set for ourselves. I urge each of you to look around at this moment and notice the familiar faces together here this evening. For most, it will be many years before you will see them again. For some, it will be the last time you will ever see them. And so we say goodbye to Wheat Ridge. Thank you for the good times and for the rough times as well. Thank you, faculty, for helping us to learn to think and for requiring us to do those things we often felt was too difficult and not necessary or important to our learning experiences. Thank you, coaches, for pushing our athletes when they were exhausted so we could learn the importance of going that extra distance. Thank you, friends and relatives, for sharing the failures, disappointments, hurts, and losses, as well as the victories, accomplishments, successes, and achievements we all have experienced. Most important of all, thank you, moms and dads, for the help, love, caring, and understanding you have given us for the last three years. Thank you for letting us beat our wings against our respective cocoons. We appreciate the many things you have done for us, but even more, we appreciate the things you let us do by ourselves so that we could grow strong enough to leave our homes prepared for the challenges ahead of us. And so to you all, for all that you have been to us and will continue to be for others as well, to those who we will see soon and to those who we will never see again, I say farewell. Farewell from the class of 1986. Thank you.
Guys, we're on. Get that little gal who's limping. Where is she? Let me start. Gal's coming. Ready? Hey, Nelson, Alexander, Scott. Robert, John, Long. Darren, Crowell, Dixon. Stephen, Keith, Bumpus. Cheryl, Lamb, Moore. Tara, Rochelle, Waldrop. Heather, Lurie, Leslie. Todd, Allen, Ingley. Ian, Alexis, Henry. Cassie, Jeanette, Stacy. Lance, Charles, Schumann. <laughs> Carla, Joanne, Hunselman. Rudy, Jeff, Talek. They've got her. Suzanne, Carol, Morris. Kirk, Joseph, Greenberg. Lisa, Lynn, Strait. Christopher, Ben, Hirose. Julie, Ann, Gagline. Arlie, Curtis, Huffman, the third. Amy, Lynn, Russ. Gregory, Allen, Addington. Catherine, Ann, Miskin. William, Allen, George. Erica, Eula, Larson. Walter, Todd, Sue Smith, Jr. Karen, Christina, Berge. Brian, Jean. Douglas, Jean. Hopkins. Cynthia, Ann, Hazeltine. Thomas, Eric, Zach. <laughs> Catherine, Leeway, Wong. Hiram, Mackey, O'Kane. Kay, Kristen, Thatcher. Keith, Allen, Thompson. Rhonda, Sue, Jones. David, Lloyd, Nodell. Mindy, Lee, Watson. David, Adams, Johnson. Natalie, Laura, Wilson. Stephen, Michael, Zamboni. Shannon, Kathleen, Leahy. Van, Patrick, Morgan. Kristen, Noel, Boner. William, James, Scaff. Cecilia, Ann, Sims. Mark, Stutz. Lenora, Marjorie, Reynolds. J. Marshall, Ernst. Britton, Beth, Garina. David, Wesley, Rye. Tiger, Lily, Lee. Catherine Marie. Christopher, John, Mary. Smith. Catherine, Mary, Pyle. Sean, David, Nichols. Kimberly, Eldridge. Dawn, Cross. Stephen, David, Eldridge. Laura, Margaret, Heon. Scott, Richard, Wanzer. Dawn Marie Sihas. Jonathan Robert Urban. John Scott Ellard. Douglas Donald Blaylack. John Paul Troutman. Yeah. David Brent Pearson. Sean Daniel Cook. Yeah. Kathy Elaine Johnson. John Patrick Galt. Christine Marie Brunger. Louis Brett Martinelli. Nancy Lynn Scruggs. Daniel Patrick McKenna. Sarah Elaine Vogg. Darren Dell Brunke. Christine Denise Haber. Kirk Everett Spellman. Christina Helen Boom. Michael Alexander Robach. Paula Suzanne Shuloff. Clayton Scott Richmond. Mary Elizabeth Cook. Joseph Anthony Sowen. Susan Marie Sakati. Robert 
Bruce Abeda. Laura Louise Nelson. Crandall James Bates. Carrie Ann Caskey. Michael Edward Dell. Barbara Christine Greco. Wait. Bennett Charles Hennon. Karen Renee Carlson. Christopher James Barker. Lisa Howard. Scott Clark McLean. Lorianne Quaddy. Douglas Andrew Dietrich. Susan Pamela Holly. Rodney Earl Clark. Kay Marie Connors. Michael Scott Dreer. Lisa Jean Nelson. Vincent John Curryville. Christine Marie Sainer. <laughs> Robert Lee Sedgwick. Jill Roberta Hundredmark. Sean Todd Butcher. Eve Carol Ludwig. Jonathan Boyd Ryling. Brenda Sue McBurney. <laughs> David <laughs> William Stum. Andrea Lucia Villachica. Kathleen Melanie right, Kroger. Christine Lynn Durfee. Mary K. Good. Walker. Michelle Lee Carranza. Joanne Redner. David Paul Hunt. J Jacqueline Laura Kane. <laughs> Stephen K. Fletcher. Michelle Marie Smith. Michael David Cobe. Stacy Lynn Butler. William David Staub. Valerie Lynn Day. Kyle Eric Richards. Carrie Suzanne Root. Michael Lee Mosley. Cynthia Carol Dunn. James Corey Blakemore. Lara Ann Campbell. John William Kirshner. Christine Lynn Jones. Mark Randall Austin. Brenda Sue Stafford. Brent Matthews. Kimberly Ann Schmidt. Dennis Michael Walton. Carol Ann Marcou. Casey Leo Magahi. Diane Claire Callender. Ronald Allen Grapevine Jr. Carissa Aileen York. Dirk Danninger. Janine Odette Provost. Tedoro Ionero. Michelle Ann Reisner. Michael Kenneth Hayhurst. Jennifer Ann Watson. Mark Allen Wassinger. Julie Ann Johansson. Mark Andrew Brown. Debbie Saavedra. Joe Swanson. Mark Samuel Saavedra. Julie Ann Stransky. Timothy William Brown. Sherry Lynn Jones. Whitney Owen what? Dempsey. Carolyn Bethna Pacello. Jonathan Matthew Flint. Heidi Janelle Powers. Daniel Joseph Udry. Brent Douglas DeBoer. Bruce Robertson Buck. Michael Jerry Wilkie. Theodore Allen Holland. Craig Kilgore. Hmm? Tiffany Noel Wires. David Lee Hoverstein. Annette Helen Eaker. Christopher Michael Leslie. Margaret Ann Bruno. Charles Edward Carlson. Jennifer Marie Burke. Michael Terry Young. Jean Woodford. Steve Wayne Hill. Holly Ann Armstrong. J. Paul Santangelo. Angela Kathleen Dodd. Dane Robert Floberg. Janine Marie Pratt. Jeffrey Thomas Santangelo. Amy Louise Klinger. Daryl Dwayne Helms. 
Aaron Marine Combs. Michael Joseph Sito. Caroline Marie Gallinger. Mark Anthony Pozorski. Laura Lynn Mahalko. Jeffrey Lee Wilder. Christine Neely. Eric Jess Maps. Roxanne Louise Sims. Joel Christopher Dar. Ann Elizabeth Antista. What? Chirelli. Okay. Stephen Risigliano. Michelle Marie Vecciarelli. Chad Clarence Hansen. Charlotte Ann Old. Andrew John Beebley Jr. Joan Marie Young. Craig Walter Dale. Christ Kristen K. Davidson. Jack Montgomery Haley. Tracy Emmons. Brian Neil Fleshig. Lisa Ann Pashada. Donald Anthony Messina. Leslie Ann Mysteri. What? What? Go ahead. Sherry Lynn Ochoa. Jill Marie Solwester. Julie Ann Bates. Carrie Ann Davis. Sherry Lynn Aragon. Sally Elizabeth Johnson. Regina Ann Berg. Howard Harmanson Gregory Miller. Melanie Irene, Melanie Irene Brewer. Glenn Patrick Carroll. Dorian Carice Faulkner. Harold Joseph Bellum III. Pamela Ann Dickinson. Anthony Patrick Mark Salvato. Judy Lynn Langheed. Bart Ensley Brown. Okay. Cherie Therese Tebow. Robert Leroy Bernhardt. Maureen Dargan. Mark William Kanger. Maureen Ann Neely. James Edward Alexander. Miriam Camille Kaufman. <laughs> Martin Damian Hill. Laura Lynn Steckley. Timothy Adler Luke. April Adele Lux. Richard Scott Callender. Julianne Rebecca Page. Craig Moore Kime. Nancy Elizabeth Nias. Michael James Perko. Tina Jacobson. Trigve Solsom Moulton. Thank you. Kimberly Ann Duke. Cole Calvert Grissom. Dina Ray Jung. Philip Rogers Simon. Lisa Fox. Daniel Mark Kratzer. Patricia Jean Hobbs. Brian Alexander Waters. Plot. Susan Jane Anderson. Thomas David Plot. Marnie Anna Bills. James Lawson Keller. Sunday Lynn Cush. Donald Holton Taylor. Brandon Todd Hagen. Smokey Torres. Michael Rao. Dale Messerly. Gary Robert Middlecamp. John MacArthur Hutto. Timothy Joseph Murphy. Mark Allen Harris. Keith James Kulesa. Mary Margaret Ferris. What? <laughs> Michael Anthony Bushell. Nicole Annette Tower. Daniel James Burroughs. Cherie Lene Weaver. Timothy James Lolly. 
Catherine Ann Williams. Stephen Lawrence Pepper. Julie Marie Jacks. Michael Anthony Boland. Janelle Renee Guerrero. Matthew Aaron Boland. Janet Elaine Hardy. Daniel Theodore May. Karen Marie Novotny. John Tyler McCushion. Tracy Lynn Perea. Aaron Eckleberry. Jennifer Lynn Lloyd. Lonnie Elwood Kent. Carolyn Joe hmm? Donahue. Clint yes. Bainbridge. Anne Marie Yesterza. Harry Luby. Elizabeth Ann Lowe. Paul Martin Seat. Pauline Ann Snyder. Todd Cameron Kiefer. Mary Jo Lynn LaGuardia. Shane Preston Harris. Laura Elena Aldretti. Rick Allen Hartley. Aaron Lynn Potempa. Lee Joseph Noel. Charlotte Johanna Forsberg. Wait. Dia Valenti Elias Sarnella. Melissa Gail Winchip. Dawn Renee Hinterman. Tracy Lynn Staley. Carol Renee Myers. Billy Joe Chapa. Linnea Stenberg. Jennifer Baldwin Stevens. Wendy Wickstrand. Elizabeth Critchfield. Lorraine Marie McSheehy. Heather Ann Denton. Shelby Sue Frickle. Sarah Dobbinsbeck. Sandra Susan Tullis. David Wilson Thibodeau. Nancy Lee Fennell. Kyle William Carstens. Joanna Marie Tacito. Scott Charles Sween. Jeannie Yvonne Huffman. William Graham. Linda Colleen Howman. James Lee Eiberger. Quick. Molly Ann Hartzler. Michael James Lubinsky. <laughs> Pamela K. Doherty. Gordon John Cooper. Marianne Isla Tanner. Stephen John Gustafson. Tracy Carlson Nelson. Patrick Anthony Stremmel. Pamela Denise Drake. Blair Campbell Latham. Christina K. Ferreter. Stephen James Progar. Deborah Elizabeth Shaver. James Todd Langland. Tanya Ray Payne. John Matthew Payne III. Beverly Lynn Pepper. John Voinus Williams. Michelle Renee Bennett. Richard Calvin Sherrill. Amy Suzanne Pope. Scott Stanton Schnebley. Karen Natalie DeGraff. Russell Lee Viles. Emiko Sudiyama. John Stephen Bissell. Julie Elise Reed. Wade Allen Davis. Holly Camille Kelly. Kettle Eddie Larson. Rianne Denise Ring. Christopher J. Jensen. Jamie Marie Sanchez. David Allen Petla. Deborah Renee Loving. David Isaac Carrasso. 
Ginger Cheryl Dodder. Give it to me. John Charles Osheroff. Barbara Lynn Mowbray. Charles Brian Matson. Kimberly Dawn Dirks. Scott Allen McCoy. Jennifer Aaron Greeby. Timothy Sean Hewer. Tammy Jean Williamson. Lauren Dean Novacek. Jamela Ann Swanson. Jeffrey Paul Moreau. Stephen Robert Zitka. Robert Michael Millard. James Allen Branson. Terry Wayne Manson. Timothy John Calarich. Last name. Brent Kelly Martins. Colin Graham Snowdy. John Whitman. Dirk Maddox. Quick, quick. Scott William Dunn. Darren Stewart. What is it? Arthur Blastician. Christopher Allen Kasky. Amir F. Portad. Michael Edward Miller. Dennison Cyril. Paul Lee Key. <coughs> John Arthur Waller II. Gordon Michael Adkins. Anthony Gary Weiss Jr. Sean Arthur Lincoln. Unfortunately, their time came short. This is a little tune we did up. It's one called the Graduation Blues. On the first day I walked into kindergarten, I was at the sweet age of five. My sweet mama teacher told me uh, I'd be the greatest thing alive. Now we're on the outside and we're peeking in. Yes, you and I made it, baby, to the very end. And sometimes I forgive, but I can tell you one thing I never forget. I sing the blues, I sing the night and day. I sing the blues, cause it's graduation day. I sing the blues, cause it's graduation day. I woke up this morning, it was graduation day. My life's a reality. We're starting today. We ain't coming around here no more. We've been waiting forever. 
to walk out that door but I wish I could come back now but I can't do that anymore my live my life now in memories of the farm I sing the blues I sing the night and day I sing the blues cause it's graduation day Sometimes it's so very good. I say sometimes it's so very sad. But the best times of all were all the ones you and I had. All right, for the next part, we're all one family now. Let's do it all together. All we're gonna do is we're gonna sing a line. What you gotta do is repeat after us. Y'all ready? Give it a chance. Here we go. We are the class of 86 We are the class of 86 Without our parents we wouldn't have made it Without, Without our parents we wouldn't have made it Now we all are our family Now we all are family Sing the graduation blues Sing the graduation blues Can I have all the graduates? Can I have you guys stand up? Stand up! Stand up! All right, I'd like to thank everybody who's here tonight, and especially all my friends and classmates for the three greatest years of my life. I'd like to thank our teachers and administrators and parents for making this such a special time in our lives. Now, in order to officially graduate from Wheat Ridge High School, I want you all to follow me in the last act of our class together, turning our tassels from your left to your right. Congratulations, let's party!
sometimes it's so very good. I see sometimes it's so very sad. But the best times of all were all the ones you and I had. All right, for the next part, we're all one family now. Let's do it all together. All we're gonna do is we're gonna sing a line. What you gotta do is repeat after us. Y'all ready to give it a chance? Here we go. We are the class of 86. We are, we are the class of 86. Without our parents, we wouldn't have made it. 